Good, Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the regularly scheduled meeting of the Ways and Means Committee. I'm John Quincy, Chair, and we're joined by Council Member uh, Yang, Council Vice President Glidden, and uh, after a long absence, we're delighted to have uh, Council Member Andrew Johnson back in the office. Hope you're feeling better. Um, there are 35 items on our agenda today, and uh, we'll begin with the uh, first item is from the Attorney's Office of the Contract with Paradigm for Court Reporting Services. Also from the City Coordinator's Office, we have a grant acceptance from Rockefeller Foundation for the 100 Resilient Cities Initiative, a grant from the McKnight Foundation, and a grant from the Funders Network. Um, the Communications Department brings forward the gift acceptance from Clear Channel Outdoor of Billboard Display Time. The Convention Center has two items. One is the low bid for uh, some wayfinding signage project with uh, messenger construction and the contract with uh, Premier Electrical Corporation for contract closeouts. Finance and Property Services has uh, four items. The one is a uh, low bid from uh, Fire Department Station 15 for floor reconstruction. We also have a lease from T-Mobile for cellular equipment at the Hoff Ramp, a lease for safety signs for equipment storage at 3601 East, uh, 50, or 44th Street East, and a gift and donation acceptance for May 2017. Information Technology Department brings forward the contract with our Arite Consulting Group. Um, and the Executive Committee brings forward the Collective Bargaining Agreement with AFSCME Council 5, Local Union 9, and that's through uh, December 31st of 2019. We also have the Collective Bargaining Agreement with Minneapolis Professional Employees Association. Uh, Community Development Regulatory Services Committee brings forward the uh, contract amendment for Greater Metropolitan Housing Corporation for Home Ownership Minneapolis, a contracts amendments with uh, Minnesota Home Ownership Center, and the 2017 Pipeline Affordable Housing Trust Fund project recommendation. Uh, item number 18 on the agenda is a uh, contract with Northeast Metropolitan School District for step-up internships and elective summer classes. We also have a grant from the U.S. Department of Energy for research and evaluation for monopath homes, grant from Hennepin County Housing and Redevelopment Authority for Minneapolis Homes Program, contract amendment with Homeline for legal advice for Minneapolis renters, and an uh, amendment to an agreement with Fairview Diagnostic <coughs> Laboratories for school-based clinic services. Public Safety, Civil Rights, and Emergency Management brings forward our contract amendment with the State of Minnesota, MNIT, for continued pawn shop transaction reporting storage. We also have contract amendment with Advanced Public Safety for electronic citation writer maintenance and support, and a contract with Minneapolis Public Schools for school resource officers. Um, Transportation and Public Works Committee brought forward the items related to the 2017 Alley Renovation Program, 46th Avenue uh, Reconstruction Project, agreement with Copart for offsite auction services, contract amendment with ACOM for 26th Avenue North Reconstruction Project, contract amendment with Thomas and Sons for street reconstruction on uh, 7th Street North, professional services contract with Parsons Bringerkoff for 3rd Street Crossover Project, grant from Hennepin County for the 27th Avenue Northeast Protected Bikeway Project, the 26th Avenue North uh, Reconstruction Project, that's a uh, assessment reduction for a parcel, and our final two items we'll uh, take up in a few moments related to uh, contracts, Pillsbury United and Native American Community Development Institute. Uh, so for the 33 items outlined on the consent agenda, are there any questions from committee members or I mean, like additional comments on? Not seeing any, I'd like to move that agenda. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And opposed, those items all carry. Which brings us to our two discussion items. They're uh, connected in, in what they're trying to accomplish here. This is relating to the uh, collaborative uh, public safety strategies funding for a uh, that was in the 2017 budget back in uh, uh, December as we passed that. And it's accelerated process to bring it to uh, fruition here uh, by June 16th. So um, I, with that, I'd like to this, of course, was on the Public Safety, Civil Rights, and Emergency Management Committee agenda, and it was sent forward without recommendation. Uh, so the Ways and Means is going to try to focus our um, uh, conversations on some of the questions that were raised 
during that committee meeting, not on the, the process or approach, but certainly on the uh, contract that's associated with that. So that's why we're, Ms. Fernandez, if you could join us and talk about the contracts for these two items, perhaps you could do them at the same time. Uh, I know there were some questions raised about um, the uh, acting as fiscal agents and the scope of services. So if that could be addressed in there, and we can also open for questions. I know we have Ms. Archibald from uh, the mayor's office, as well as representatives, at least from uh, NACDI here, and uh, former council member, uh, Glit uh, I almost called you Glidden, <laughs> Lilligren, thank you, council members. Mm -hmm. So Pam, if you could go ahead and uh, outline uh, for uh, discussion purposes on the contracts for Pillsbury United and NACDI. So, um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm Pam Fernandez, Director of Procurement, and um, we have been helping out um, in putting this contract together. First of all, it was about the um, scope of services, like what do we want to do under this contract for this money? And uh, Mayor's office did a great job reaching out to the um, community to get some suggestions on what they would like to do, each neighborhood. and. Um, with, with that scope of services, a few of the selected services are going to be done with this money. Um, and we've selected two, um, two um, service providers and one for the West Broadway Coalition, um, that neighborhood, and then the other one for the Little Earth. So um, with that one, do you have any specific questions about the contracting itself? Well, um, I, I do, and I think we can get to it, but we'll let uh, Council Vice President uh, ask her first question, and we'll see if we can scope this for you. Thanks. Okay, so I just, I might be missing something, and maybe we have the wrong presenter here. I, I have no idea. I don't, <laughs> not, it sounds like you are here for kind of the mechanics of the yes. contracting, yes. and I'm, I'm not sure if that's the issue. I didn't listen to the committee. I actually, sitting down here, this is the first I've understood that the other committee forwarded without recommendation and so I want to know who is the best person to describe to us what were the questions mm -hmm. from the other committee just so I can understand what's sure. what's the issue I think we can probably do that sure. obviously Ms. Fernandez you were framing it from a finance perspective on yes. the contracts with the two providers that would serve as fiscal agents but if Ms. Archibald if you could join us that would be great uh, this was the agenda item out of the um, uh, out of the budget that created these uh, two uh, two hundred and fifty thousand dollar grant programs to each of these uh, targeted areas, could you explain why and perhaps the process that got us to this point, and then the cohort that the they would be serving? Right, but I want to make sure. My question is, and that's great to give a little overview. My question is, what were the remaining questions out of the uh, public safety committee? because both of these were forwarded without recommendation and they're two different entities and that's why it seems a little confusing to me. So, Go ahead if you'd like to try uh, to answer that question if you can. I think it, perhaps Councilmember Yang as the chair of that committee could address that as well. But. Well, I can give my understanding of why it was forwarded without a recommendation. Um, Mr. Chair, Council Vice President Glidden, um, there were questions from the community about the process, and my understanding is that um, uh, Ch Committee Chair Yang um, had some ambivalence about those who ended up as the awardees of the process, and that was why it was forwarded without a recommendation. Councilmember Yang, I was wondering if you might be able to kind of further explain for Council Vice President and the audience, um, the reasons for the re without the recommendation and what we could address here in this committee that might help address those bigger issues. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, you know, with regards to addressing the issues here in ways and means, you know, uh, you and I had the discussion about, you know, talking about just kind of the uh, financial uh, aspects of it uh, with regards to the committee itself. Uh, you know, it was my sense from that meeting that um, Council Member Kano and myself, you know, had some reservations with regards to um, just the process in itself, you know, who uh, received uh, these um, contracts, if you will. And so that was kind of just, you know, the short of it was just kind of, you know, trying to figure out uh, whether we could come to a consensus, you know, afterwards, you know, in the time period between the committee and um, the full council meeting on Friday as to, you know, how we proceed. But that was it, though. I mean, there were some questions related to that. And so that's why, you know, I made the 
a motion to just move it with that recommendation from public safety. So if I might, um, and I apologize, this is um, not to put Council Member Yang on the spot, but I do have some questions based on those comments. So the issue isn't necessarily who is the fiscal agent, I guess is this supposed to be a fiscal agent or the holder of the contract or whatever, because there are several different organizations that would then receive funding, as I understand it, even though there might be an overall contractor or fiscal agent or whatever is that responsibility. Um, so the issue isn't so much with those organizations, but with the ultimate recommendations that came out of the, the process. Am I under, I just want to make sure I'm understanding what were the questions raised in the committee. And, and I have not, again, I didn't get any outreach from staff or from any council members on this. I'm just trying to understand where we're at today and if there is a specific proposal being worked on for how to move forward. Yeah. Um. Council Vice President um, Glidden, uh, Mr. Chair, um, you know, I, I don't know what is happening behind the scenes. Uh, we're not working it, you know, from my office, I can say that. And, um, you know, to the extent in which, you know, there are issues related to, you know, uh, the proposals themselves, you know, I, I don't think, I don't think anybody was, you know, in, in the situation where they were attacking any of the proposals. I mean, the proposals were the pro proposals. I, I think, you know, we're fine with that. I think the issue was just maybe the process in itself and, you know, what what questions arose out of that. But I mean, certainly, you know, that was why we moved with that recommendation. Um, again, you know, pointed out uh, the council members that were involved in um, the committee itself. You know, there were a couple who, you know, had questions or had issues related to that and that's, where it came from, but no, nothing related to the merits of each of the proposals. Okay, and I only ask, I, neither of these proposals cover geographic territory that's in the 8th Ward, and I haven't been part of the, the process. I have no <laughs> issue with any, anything or, you know, I just want to make sure I'm understanding kind of what then happens because, um, I wish Councilmember Kana was here if she's one of the people that had questions. Because um, uh, at the end of the day, we have uncontracted money that's allocated in the budget. And um, I guess I feel unclear, is this something that there's a request for an additional cycle to take care of? Or is this something where there's just a disagreement about whether the process what it should have been from the beginning and in that case is this a situation where we just need to make a decision about there's money in the budget that would go to community and how can it be used before if these are summer particularly summer or warm weather related activities primarily how do we make sure the money gets in use by the community um, so that would just be my questions i would hate for there to be a resource there that then couldn't be used at all by the community um, acknowledging that there can be some differences of opinion on the process. And again, I, I haven't been part of the process at all, so I'm not here to offer any opinion on that. So okay. I think well, Councilmember Yang might have some <clears throat> thought to share back. It, yeah. Right. Mr. Chair, um, Council Vice President Glidden, I would just say to your latter point, I mean, that's kind of where we're headed, which is just, uh, you know, um, push it through committee and get it to the vote on Friday. And, you know, I mean, my best sense of it is that um, we're going to pass the um, item in itself, and so that's not going to be the issue. And, you know, I think if anything, I mean, it was just kind of the clunky things that were along the road, and you know, we'll just kind of get to the point where you know we take a vote on it. Okay, thank you. That's helpful, Ms. Archibald. If you could, um, I know one of the specific questions that came out of the committee was about the twelve percent uh, as a fiscal agent and what that contract uh, stipulations would be and what's different about this. This is a totally innovative project. It's something that we put into the budget uh, on the collaborative public safety strategies. It had those two specific areas. So if you could outline really quickly uh, the, the, the process that was uh, matched and it certainly was an accelerated when we talk about it in December and then we take it up quickly and the intent was to have it out as the council vice president just outlined is in the summer. We want it out on June 16th. So that's a compressed time for period with a, a total new idea on how to do something. Mm -hmm. So if you could outline the process, some of the decision-making criteria, and who was in the decision-making uh, roles to make these recommendations. And then if we could wrap that 
and tie it to how these two fiscal agents are going to help uh, structure those uh, cohorts to deliver these services as quickly as we can and the purpose for this. Certainly, Mr. Chair. Give it a try. Uh, a lot of questions. Sorry <laughs> about that. We'll start back at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yes, the 2017 budget was allocated a half a million dollars to be shared between Little Earth and West Broadway. Um, for the community to decide for themselves how to use this money for public safety strategies that are on the ground that will interrupt or disturb disrupt um, patterns of negative behavior that folks reported uh, quite frequently seeing last year on along West Broadway so and and also in Little Earth um, so the money is designed to be allocated to projects that can be started immediately upon receipt or approval of the approval of the contracts um, in, in beginning in February, we worked with Cities United, which is an organization that supports mayors in um, developing anti-violence or violence reduction strategies across the country. Uh, Cities United pro bono came to Minneapolis to work with us to develop a project that's community um, centered in order to um, help have them, how do we best have the community decide where, these, where this money goes to? Uh, so we, the process went as follows. Um, the first two months, February, March, into April, we did a series of small group meetings, community meetings, one-on-one -on -one meetings um, in the West Broadway neighborhood and in Little Earth um, and shared the, the kind of bare bones of the structure with community and asked for their feedback and their thoughts and what would they like to see and uh, what would make them feel safer, what are they most proud of, what do they want to see more of and use that to develop a community-informed um, matrix, which was used to score both the ideas and the proposals, which came forward. Um, I can talk about more of that when we get to that part of the process. Um, the, 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 the whole process began with a call for ideas. So 300 words or less, we asked the community to submit their ideas on what they would like to do to make West Broadway or Little Earth safer this summer. That initial call for ideas was followed by a round of uh, reviews, which included community members. So what we did differently in this process was we brought the review sessions out into the community and held them in the community, um, invited community to participate. So on our review panels, we had um, staff from NCR, staff from the health department, youth violence prevention and intervention team, adolescent development, um, and we also had uh, one of the folks from the Minneapolis Police Department's National Initiative for Building Community Trust and Justice. So on the city side, those were the city staff reviewers and content experts. Uh, from the community, we had residents, business owners, um, association uh, members all uh, participated in these review sessions. For the most part, each session was at, um, very close to 50-50. So if we had um, four city staff, we had four to six community members that participated as well. Um, so that was round one. Uh, we had 74 ideas submitted for West Broadway. We moved 24 of those forward to the next phase out of West Broadway. And from Little Earth, we had 35 submissions, and we moved um, 21 forward to the next phase. That next phase included uh, proposal development workshops where we invited um, the community members that submitted the ideas along with their collaborative team members to um, come to these meetings and find out more information about how to turn their idea into a proposal. So we basically walked them through the matrix for scoring, which was community informed. We walked, the, we walked them through this, which I am happy to forward to committee. Um, so the categories were activation, safety, community engagement, collaborative opportunity. So those were four buckets that we heard repeatedly through our community conversations and community uh, meetings. And um, in addition to those four buckets, we had feasibility, impact, and overall ranking. So these things combined ended up being how each proposal and each idea was scored. So following the proposal development workshops, um, the participants had about 10 days to turn in their proposal. Um, and following that, we had our second review process, which then scored the proposals against the same matrix, which they were, um, uh, which is what we used for round one, two. Uh, following that, we ended up with our list of um, 
top rank proposals. We reviewed that with city staff again to ensure the feasibility of each of those proposals that were selected. Um, the requested amount for each of the proposals um, compared to the amount that was funded varied among each of the participants, or each of the awardees. And, and the reduction in the budget was also done through the informed lens of the city staff and determining feasibility ranges and things along those lines. Thanks very much for that general outline. And I'm, I'm sure there's also a metric in there whether they're successful or not as we're trying to evaluate uh, those, those programs um, and what they've contributed over the summer. Is, how is that going to be evaluated? Is that part of each of those metrics as well? So each, each awardee is responsible for identifying an evaluation plan, um, which we're also uh, going to be continually working with them as they get into, as they get into their projects. There might be um, new ways or, or more ways that they want to evaluate the success or impact of their projects. But yes, uh, the evaluation plan is a component of each proposal. Mm -hmm. And the uh, proposals that were not accepted in this final round of recommendations, um, was there feedback provided back to those organizations and what would strengthen them or why they were not chosen over another? That's always a hard part when you've got people coming to the process for the first time and suddenly thinks, you know, I should have gotten this and I shouldn't, uh, why not? Did we communicate back to people on how to shape their proposals or ideas for further consideration in, in the future? Mr. Chair, uh, yes, we, if, for those that we have had the capacity to respond to, to the state, yes. Um, there are some more that have inquired about feedback, which we will be getting to them. Okay. Yes. Now, as we get to the uh, uh, fiscal agent uh, issues, when we have one on the south, one on the, uh, on the north side, um, can you tell us how those organizations were selected to be fiscal agents and what their scope of services is for this contract and the 12% uh, overhead administrative fee and what we're expecting out of that? Uh, when we were searching for the fiscal agent to take on this role, we needed, um, we really evaluated who, which agencies and organizations in the community, one, had the capacity to do this. We're asking them to do more than be just a pass-through for the money. We want them to be a convener and a support mechanism for the folks that have been awarded these funds. Um, in the sense that we're building out a cohort. And um, so there's a north side group and a south side group. Based on the workshops and um, sessions that they've been able to share space in so far, our, uh, our participants have been very energized around, you know, supporting one another and wanting to, to continue building and digging deeper in the community and building more relationships in the community. Uh, so that's part of the role of the fiscal agents, in addition to being um, handling the financial aspects of this, is they're going to be a convener for the awardees on a regular basis, as well as convening monthly meetings to include city staff, which, of course, the council members and aides will be um, invited to. But just to, you know, continue building a, a support network, but also an informational exchange about how we're seeing transformation happen through these projects. But, well, thank you very much. I think that helps frame it because uh, I know one of the questions I think that was raised in the discussion uh, in the other committee uh, was why can't the city just do it itself? We could just write checks and do this. Why do we need to uh, involve uh, a, a fiscal agent in this? And my, my thought is initially is city is not in the traditional habit of being a grant writer. Um, we are in the addition of doing contracts for services. This has a very defined scope of services, although innovative and hard to measure, but it's a, it's a, a first out of this box. We thought it was important to extend that uh, need to a fiscal agent, not just for the grant writing administration of the check writing, but to really make sure that it's effective as possible and in including uh, the cohort as you described and, uh, and being responsive in the community to evaluate its success. So that's, I think, explains what we're expecting of the fiscal agents well beyond the idea of uh, transferring money back and forth. So I hope that answers that question uh, that was brought up in the previous uh, comments from the uh, uh, committee members as well as uh, the community that was offered the opportunity to testify in some capacity. So I think that, that frames it. Are there other questions or comments that either Ms. Archibald or Ms. Fernandez could address? Okay, not seeing any. Thank you very much for both the, uh, the product 
and uh, the uh, oversight to bring these ideas forward to us. We're happy to have that. So thank you very much. Um, I'm not seeing any other questions on this. I'd like to move both items uh, of uh, the Collaborative Public Safety Strategies funding uh, for 2017 uh, forward for approval today. So any other questions? Not seeing any. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for everybody for attending on short notice, but appreciate that very much. Uh, seeing no further business on our agenda, we are adjourned. Thanks so much.